Hi, my name is Dean Montgomery and I'm here to help you with learning how to do video editing on Linux. We're going to be using a program called KDN Live. We also need to be able to hook the camera up to the computer to get the video off the camera onto the computer. There are several ways to do this. Um, some of them have a little micro card in them, an SD card. Um, or an easier way is if you have a USB plug. So the USB plug has a big end that goes into the computer and a little end that goes into the camera. We now need to move the videos from the camera to the computer hard drive. So we'll start with the menu, go down to places and your camera will be listed differently depending on the make and model of camera uh, so you choose the, the drive that represents your camera every camera organizes and stores its movies differently on the camera so we'll explore the camera and find our movies here's our movies here I'm gonna highlight them and we want to get them onto the hard drive. We do not want to edit videos on the camera. We want to bring them to the hard drive first. So I'm going to right click and copy these videos to the clipboard. Go to my home folder. It'll have your username there. And we right click and we paste. So now these videos are on my hard drive and there's still a copy on the camera. To start KDM Live, we go back to the menu, go to Sound and Video, and find KDM Live, and click. This is the config wizard that you'll see the first time you start KDM Live. We can just click Next, and then Next. It's best to choose high definition, 720p at 30 frames per second. Uh, you can match it with your camera. If you go higher, you will slow things down uh, while creating your video. So 720p, 30 frames per second is pretty good for what we're doing. Next, next, and finish. We're now going to look at the KDN Live interface. So on this side is where we'll bring in different media that we can work with. Uh, here we'll look at the effects and over here is a monitor to see what's happening and down at the bottom is how we layer on our uh, media. So let's add some media. I've already got some media here. I'm going to add it to the project. So these are little video clips that I could include in my project. I'm going to add some more. Uh, so you can get different types of clips. Let's add that one. So when you want to use a clip, you just click on it, hold it, and drag it down into this area. Uh, we can zoom in and out to make it fit. We can trim off the beginning and ends of clips uh, by sliding this along. Um, to layer on more clips, we can grab one and put it above. If we overlap them here, you'll see a little green arrow um, to add a transition. So I'm going to add a transition. A little bar has shown up down here, and I click on that bar, and it lets you choose up here as the effects area, but here we get to choose what type of transition we want. So I'm going to just do a dissolve transition, and in our project monitor, we'll have a quick look at what that looks like. Make it go so it dissolved the two together. Uh, you can also uh, fade the volume. This is a volume slider, so you can fade in the sound. And you can as well down here, oops, uh, it's up here, is fade out the sound one to another. To add effects, we go to the effects list, and you can search for effects. So let's say I want to um, do sepia. So color sepia fet, and I just drag it down on top of there. Now it says here that it's a sepia effect applied. If I just go back a little bit, you'll see this is all turned yellow, and you get to see it right away. You can organize, uh, you can layer effects, so you can have more than one effect applied at the same time uh, by dragging more than one effect down. 
um, there's sound effects too. It's not just uh, video. If I go to audio, uh, a fun one I like to play with is called the pitch shifter. So I'm gonna drag that down. I can make my voice sound really low. Or we're gonna make our voice go all squeaky. Next is uh, let's do a title slide. So we added a few clips. Um, so if we click on the down arrow here, we can add a title clip. So let's add a title clip. I just click and start uh, typing. So tonight's show. Uh, you can change the font size. Um, there's a border on it. You can arrange how it's on the screen, animate it in and out. Um, also, another thing, if you don't like the fonts and you want fancier fonts, you can use a graphics program like GIMP or that to create titles and just add the, the picture at the end. So I've created a picture. We'll just open it. So this artistic font was created in the GIMP and it's got a transparent background. So I've got a uh, title. I'm going to change the font size in this. Make it a little smaller. So tonight shows KDN Live. Let's add a bit of a border. Click OK. So now we've got a title clip here. Uh, its duration is five seconds. Uh, we can drag it down, put it over top of that. When I rewind now, you'll see here's the title and the text, and it's gone over top of the the project. I can play, and that title's overlaid. And again, you can apply effects. We could fade it in or out by clicking this little green down arrow. Uh, you'll notice down here in the bottom there'll be tips and wizards as you hover your mouse over it. So that says click to add a transition uh, up at the top. This is for resizing a fade effect. And uh, this lets you change the, the, uh, the length of the videos. Um, okay, so we've gone over adding clips, video clips, adding titles. Let's add some music. So uh, it's just a regular clip again. And instead of finding a video file, we find a music file. So I had downloaded one earlier. Okay, so here's a, a music file now, and you've got one, two, three video tracks, and, and here's an audio track down here. So I'm going to pull that down into the audio track. And I'm going to add an effect to that. Um, let's do gain, which means uh, volume control. So I could fade out how much sound is on this track so it doesn't overwhelm uh, the vocal or the uh, speaking in this track. So you have some tunes in the background. Now we're going to look at some of the tools in the bottom. Um, namely, there's the selection tool, which is the normal tool. There's cutting clips and there's moving clips as a group plus the zoom tool. So to use this we'll zoom in a bit. Uh, what we do is we play it until we find this the sweet spot where we want to cut the clip. So we'll cut the clip. So now it's made two clips out of this. Uh, and I'm going to cut it over here as well just to work with it a bit. Okay, so now say I wanted to insert something. I can click and drag and you'll notice as I drag not only this clip but everything it gets shoved over so I can make a gap and insert something else in here uh, I can go back to the selection tool kinda always want to go back to selection tool once you're done cutting or moving and I can move this around um, I can right click and copy a section and then paste so I can double it up. Uh, what's useful about this is I can add an effect. Um, say I want to pitch shift just a certain section. I can do a pitch shift on there. Um, let's say I want just a little bit to have uh, sepia 
actually let's do some of the fun ones we'll do charcoal so say I wanted this section to be charcoal um, I could just cut out a little section change the effects change the sounds and uh, have it um, have it render just little bits or be able to move things and create a gap so you can add more in. It's also good when you're clipping in little bits to actually um, slightly bring the volume in a little bit like fade it out and fade it in um, and that way uh, you don't get a sudden pop in the sound uh, just a tiny bit of fade in uh, will make the transitions a bit smoother. Uh -huh. Right. Um, okay, so we've gone over adding um, adding media to your project, how to organize it on the screen, how to layer it one on top of the other, transitions. Uh, we looked at creating a title clip, adding music. Now we're going to look at uh, your final render. Rendering involves taking all the clips and effects and sound bites and putting it all into one single file. For our purpose, we're going to go render it to YouTube. Um, the way I like to render to YouTube is um, to first update my rendering profiles. So I'll go into settings and download new render profiles. Um, from here, there's several um, profiles that get updated every once in a while. It's mainly because YouTube's always changing and you can get uh, better formats or more up-to-date formats. So I'll just update some of these rendering profiles. Um, I'm not going to do them all right now, but I'll just do two of them. If you haven't installed them, you actually see the install button and you install it for the first time. Also, if you have devices that aren't listed um, in the rendering options, you can find uh, the different devices and update their rendering profiles. Okay, so the final render button is right here. We'll just click that. There's lots of destinations that you can render to which we'll get to in a second but I usually first set my um, uh, file name so YouTube. and I need to know this later because I have to find this file when I'm on the YouTube website to upload so this is the name of the file um, so for file rendering there's a whole bunch of different types you can render and uh, every time you, you choose a different type it gives you different options. It also changes the file extension of the file when you choose different types. I'm going to go to, there's file rendering, there's say mobile devices rendering, Apple Android devices, um, but we're doing a website so I'm going to go to websites and um, my downloaded uh, profiles, rendering profiles, are put under the custom folder. Even though you will see YouTube ones down here, um, my custom one is where those profiles were downloaded to. And I usually do the biggest and best, and YouTube takes that and downsizes it to a whole bunch of different sizes uh, for your project. Uh, the last bit, I have a selected zone, you probably want to do full project, and then we render. And the most exciting part of all is waiting. We have to wait for this to finish. Sometimes it's uh, 10, 15 minutes, an hour, it depends on how many processors you have on your computer and how fast they are. Waiting. I'm waiting. Now the uh, render is finished, so we will just close the window. The final stage is to go to youtube.com. Um, you probably have to create an account if you don't have one or sign in if you already do. Uh, you push this upload button and you follow the instructions to upload your video. Thank you for watching the video on how to do KDN Live video editing. I hope you have fun video editing and always fun. Even if it doesn't work for you, keep having fun doing it.